I'm telling you what I know, because I came across a, 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 a house and they had some pretty collard greens I was thinking about cutting across the yard. Maybe I'm just overreacting. So you pick up the phone and you start calling your so-called friends, asking them, what should I do? And the chariot is sitting outside. Christ is sitting on the chariot, surrounded with a host of angels getting ready to take you to your promised land. Yes. You call around and you call around and you call around and you finally get somebody on the phone. You know how Christian folk is, first, those church folk. We need validation. See, you weren't planning on leaving no way. All you need is the right person to help you stay. You call Lucy, Lucy say, girl, go. Well, Lucy, she never really would gave that much good advice anyway. <laughs> I think I'm going to call Gina. You call Gina. Gina say, girl, go. I don't know what she's talking about. She wouldn't leave anyway. I think I'm going to call Mary. Call Mary. Mary, you, you going to leave that big old house, girl? You better stay in that situation. If I were you, I wouldn't go nowhere. Jesus on the chariot. He said, no. No, I asked you. No, I allowed you to go your way. But you don't cry out to me and don't think I'm not going to show up. And since I'm here, you coming out. One way or another. The expectations were not prepared for God's hand of deliverance. So he comes home, the husband that's been abusing you. Mm. And then there's a 911 call. You come out, even on the stretch. But God got you out. See, we can't cry out to God, continue to call on the name of Jesus, and think that he's not going to come and rescue us. Right. Now, we could, may not come out the way we want, but he will bring us out. Amen. So if you're not ready to come out, when you pray, call on the name of Larry. Just don't say Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. Resurrection power, healing power, deliverance power. There's something about the name of Jesus. Yoke destroying power in the name of Jesus. And if you cry out and call on the name of Jesus and you're not ready to go, guess what? You're going anyway. But I dare not be so bold mm -hmm. and not be ready. When I start crying out, everything is prepared for me to come out. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. When I start crying out, I am prepared to come out. If it means I have to let go of something and somebody, I'm coming out. But how many of you are really ready to come out of your situation? Lord, if you just get me out this time. He brings you out. Then you got an Egypt mentality and go right back in. But I heard in the word of God, I read in the word of God that any man that looks back is not fit for the kingdom. If you ever had your hand to the gospel plow yes. and you look back, 
you're not fit for the kingdom. When God brings you out, and then you get an Egypt mentality and get yourself in the same situation that he got you out of, at least do something different. At least be able to say, well, Lord, you know, you know you've never got me out of this situation. But he brings you out and you go back into the same path that he got you out of. But even more, when he brings you out and he takes you into the wilderness, all you do is complain. I was making two dollars more on the last job I had. <laughs> child, back there at the last job I had, child, we ain't do all of this. But yet and still, you were being worked ruthlessly. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody liked you. But child, I tell you, we took a break every five minutes on the last job I had. But you kept a headache the whole while you were there. Now that compassion, God said, wait a minute. I can't satisfy you. Mm -hmm. yes. I can't please you. Yes. So I'm going to keep you here on this job right here. See, I had a $10 hour more job waiting for you. If you could have just thanked me for this one. Right. You said you were tired of the headache, so I got you out the headache. Wow. Now you get over here, now you complain about you can't go to the bathroom when you want to go to the bathroom. I can't please you. So it's been around here for about 40 years. I think you're retired about. Then you realize ain't no to retire player with this one. When we cry out to God, remember, he sees already. So he already knows what's going on. He hears you when you cry. And he's going to move in one or two ways depending on your situation with compassion or with anger. And just know you always when God brings you out got to go through the wilderness first. But the key to the wilderness is knowing in your heart is not going to be a long time. Most of y'all can't spend one day without your cell phone or the internet. Amen. Lose that phone and you lose your mind. Amen. You'll leave your wife and your kids standing on the curb for that cell phone. Folk can't live with you when you don't have that cell phone. Because all of this stuff has disconnected you from God. So he has to break away all of this stuff. He has to put you in a wilderness. And the wilderness, remember, is not about you. When he brings you out, the wilderness is about your celebrating him. Amen. And when you can do that, then and only then will you see the blessings that he's promised you. Some of y'all in your wilderness experience right now. Some of y'all didn't physically move from your, 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 your bad situation. He's brought you out. But right now you're going through a wilderness transition. And while you're in that wilderness transition, you're still in the same home. You're still in the same relationship. You're still on the same job. But you're in the wilderness. Yeah. And while you're in the wilderness, stop complaining. Yeah. Stop whining. And start celebrating God. Right. The doors of the church are open. Time if you want prayer, and ask all the ministers to come up, please. If you want prayer, please come forward and let us pray. Come 
to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just